So in this video, we're going to take a look at the development version because there's a feature freeze now for FreeCAD 1.0. So what we have in development should have all the features of 1.0. And so we're going to take a look at what we've got there. We're going to start out by looking at the sketcher and we'll go from there. So the first thing I want to show you is how do you get the development version? Because this is going to be all about development version. Notice the new logo as well. There's a new logo that FreeCAD has come up with. Um, we're going to go here. We're going to say we want to download um, from FreeCAD. We're going to say download now. And if we point to the 64-bit installer or this portable, whichever, you can see the version down there. It says FreeCAD 0.21.2. That's not what we want. We're going to go all the way down here to the development version and we're going to click on that Conda. So I'm working in Windows right now, so I'm going to do the Windows version. Of course, if you're doing a Mac OS or you're doing Linux, you're going to pick whichever one's appropriate. Um, now, the file that I need is this 7-zip file. I don't need these text files. These are actually just to confirm. This text file just confirms that this download is valid. Um, I trust these guys, so I'm just going to download this guy. And I'm going to save it where I normally save my FreeCAD stuff, which is in FreeCAD Dev. And I'll just save it there. It takes a little while to download because it's uh, 370 megabytes of uh, files. And then once I get to there, I am going to open it with 7-zip. So it's downloaded. I'm going to go into that um, directory and just give it a second because it hasn't finished. Whenever you see this, that means it's not finished yet. And this version is, we can see the version number on here. So it's going to be 37645. This is an older development version. And I'm actually going to delete that one so we got no confusion there. Just get rid of that one. Gone. And then this one I'm going to open with um, 7 zip. If you don't have 7 zip, you can download it, it's free. Uh, once I get there, I'm going to hit that, say extract. And I'm just extracting it in that same directory. So I'm going to extract all those files. It takes a little while to extract them. There's a lot of files. It's going to have a, um, a little break around here somewhere. I notice when it does the uh, extraction. Once they're all extracted, I'll show you how we can go in and start FreeCAD. So now you can see that's all extracted now. And the that is created this folder, which has that 37645 um, version number in the name. I'm just going to double click that, go inside this bin folder. Bin is where the binaries are. Then I'm going to scroll down until I find FreeCAD. And that's what we're going to start with. So one thing I'm going to do first is I'll show you my version. So about FreeCAD, you see that's that 37645 uh, version 0 0.22.0 dev and the revision number is 37645. So this should have all the features of 1.0. One thing I've done is I've gone into preferences and I've changed my theme from classic to light modern it's up to you if you want to change it i changed it because i think it looks a little easier to work with for this version um, so that's basically the reason i did it i i've used it before and i like it so we're going with light modern and first thing you can see in the light modern version this panel on the left is um not as defined, shall we say. Once we create something though, if we create a new file, now you can see the panel a little bit better. 
and we're going to create a part and we're going to create a body. Now notice that things are highlighted, colored, slightly different. Again, it's the theme that I'm using, so um, you'll see those things. Now the first exciting part, um, pretty much I start up in part design, of course, and pretty much part design looks the same. So there's not much there to see. Um, there are a few things on the views here that are slightly different, but for the most part, it's the same stuff. Now what I'm going to do is create a sketch, and this is where things start to get a little bit different. So I'm going to go in on the XY plane, and first of all, we can see that my animation, when I move around, it, it's, it's a bit nicer, a bit smoother. Um, and then we can see these options are very similar to what we had before. I'm going to create a centered rectangle. And I'm just going to create from there. Notice we have our sizes now showing up. It's a nice feature. So I can see this is going to be roughly around 50 square. And now here comes the cool stuff. So the dimensioning has now changed to this auto dimensioner. You can still use all the individual ones the way we used to. But this auto dimensioning is pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to select that. And so now it's auto dimension. If I pick a line and run away from it, it's going to dimension that line. But if I go to this line, now it's going to do an angle because I went to the center line to that first line that I picked. So it assumes it wants to be in an angle now. Um, and so that makes it interesting if you pick this line and and you just wanted to um, go with a dimension like this you don't want to pick right on the line you want to pick to the left of the line to the right of the line doesn't matter and then you can just do a regular dimension another thing that's kind of interesting with that if you just select a point and you scroll up it automatically assumes that you want to dimension that point from the origin and if you notice I can do an angular one here too pop up here so that gives me that point I say okay and of course my square is already constrained because everything is uh, in a centered rectangle everything is um, symmetrical so this also works if we do a circle and we want to dimension it. We just go to the circle, we click it, automatically it's doing a dimension for a diameter. So that is awesome. It means we have one tool. We don't have to worry whether we're on a vertical or horizontal or whatever line it is. It's going to allow us to dimension it. Um, I think that's fantastic. I think it's a great addition to the sketcher. Now, another thing I want to show you, I'm going to just draw a couple of lines here. I'm going to do a line here, a line here, a line there, a line there. We'll come down, we'll just join them, just because we can. And now, if we want to go, we want to make this one horizontal, we pick this. And this is our constrained horizontal, constrained vertical. So we click it it will automatically go to the one that it assumes it should be. So if I constrain vertical, constrain horizontal for that one, because of where it was, it assumed that I wanted a horizontal. I didn't want a horizontal in that case. Um, I'm a long way off, but I actually want a vertical, so I can go and pick my vertical constraint, and then I can add my vertical line that way. So um, you still have the option to not be automated, but if you want it automated and you select this, we can go through the whole list and we can make these lines vertical and horizontal automatically. So again, another great tool that saves us some time in that it already makes some assumptions. It's like having a, an assistant. And then you have this coincident one is slightly different. So the coincident constraint is showing up this way um, it's 
what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to do uh, constrain two points or fix a point on an edge. Before there used to be two separate commands. Now they're just one. So if I do this and I take another line and let's say we put it here. And then I can say, if I take this point and this point and say they're coincident, and I can take this point and this point and say they're coincident. So you can see how that works. It's, it's pretty uh, impressive. Again, from a dimensioning standpoint, now if I'm dimensioning this, it's going to dimension it the way that you want it dimensioned. So I can say I want it angular. I want it to be horizontal. I can um, dimension the angle like this. I select that line, I select this line, and just pull out my angle. So once again, it's, uh, it's a very flexible tool that allows us to do things um, without having to change tools all the time. So it's a really good tool for dimensioning and getting dimensions onto the drawing very quickly. So again, that's, that's the sketcher. There's lots of um, neat features. We still have all our trim and radius and all those features are still there. Um, you can still switch to construction lines. You can still switch to reference constraints. Um, so you got lots of different options and it makes the sketcher just that much easier to use. So hopefully um, you'll find that these are easy to use. As I said, the features are now frozen for 1.0. So these are all the things that we're going to have. Of course, one of the things that has been built in there is the solution for the top and top of the solution for the topological naming issue and so hopefully um, you'll see how that works what i'm going to do is i'm going to close this sketch i'm going to delete this sketch and i'll just run you through the sort of test that i do so when i want to see if topological naming is an issue I just create a sketch of a shape and I'm just going to create a rectangle. Close that and then I'm going to pad it and say OK. Now I'm going to create a sketch on this face and I am going to cut a square out there. that we'll say cut that we'll go through all just because we can say okay and then we're going to go back to our original sketch and we're going to change something here we'll do we'll create several faces that are different I'm just going to trim those pieces off, close that, and now you can see I've changed. There are multiple faces now, and this is still in the right place, which is a fantastic situation. So I'm not sure I recommend doing everything off a face, but certainly it seems to work now. So if I, if I take that off a face, and then if I change that face, we'll go back to this sketch and we'll change it once more. Presto. 
and there it is it's actually everything has stayed where it is it's not blown up the way it used to be I'm very impressed with that because that can make a big difference particularly if you're doing something that's at a strange angle instead of having to create a plane and figure out where that plane should be you can go off the face so that is a, a much faster way to do things so hopefully you've enjoyed a quick look at the new development version the one that has all the features that's going to be released in 1.0 um, there's many many more features I just wanted to show you the sketch over real quick because that's for me it's where I do most of my work when I'm creating models and then the topological naming stuff is obviously something we've been waiting for so if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up um, if you haven't already done so if you would subscribe trying to grow the channel a little bit and it's hard if people don't subscribe they watch but they don't subscribe um, by all means share this video because the more views I get the the better that is um, and then if there are things you want me to cover particularly in the new version you can leave me a comment below or you can join my patreon where we talk about this stuff or you can join me on uh, youtube or you can just go ahead and buy me a coffee and leave me a note there and i'll do what i can to cover the, the things that you want me to cover thanks i'll see you in the next one